So I wanted to take a couple of minutes and shoot a short video just showing the basic uh, chromatography testing to make sure that our wines have finished melolactic fermentation. And so I'm going to show you just the basic kit that I purchased. I purchased it from uh, piwine.com. Uh, it was about 50 bucks. came with the solvents, three different acid uh, regiments that you use in the test, uh, about 30 sheets of uh, chromography paper, and a uh, one gallon container to actually uh, put the solvent in when uh, doing the testing. So anyways, here's just a basic demonstration of that test. It's a very simple test, but the whole process does take about a day and a half from the time you start it till the time that the uh, actual paper uh, dries and you can actually read it. So anyways, this is it in a nutshell. So anyways, this is the uh, one gallon container that we use um, to actually put the solvent and the uh, paper in uh, once we've put the, uh, the different acid uh, spots on the paper along with your wine samples. Uh, this is the solvent that comes with the kit. Uh, this kit came with uh, eight and a half ounces and it uh, I've run a total of I think six tests so far and that's all the solvent that I've used. And the solvent's reusable. What you don't use you pour back into that container when you're done and seal it up and it's good to go. Uh, my kit also came with uh, three different um, acid uh, standardization solutions. One obviously being malic acid, another one being tartaric acid, and the third being lactic acid. Uh, my kit came with 30 sheets of paper. Some kits from some places only come with 10. Um, I chose to purchase my kit from piwine.com because it came with 30 actual chromography pages and I felt that the value was great for what I was getting. Um, also comes with a hundred of these um, capillary pipettes that you need for putting the samples on the actual paper. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a line across the bottom edge of the chromography paper about an inch to an inch and a half whatever the thickness of your ruler is uh, in pencil. You don't want to use pen because pen for obvious reasons might inhibit the test but pencil seems to work the best and so we've got a line that we've drawn and we want to put a little mark, whether it's a dot or an X or you know whatever you want, um, approximately every inch apart. And you don't want to be any closer than an inch from either edge. So I'm going to start my first mark at about an inch and a quarter. And I'm going to need a total of six places to put either wine or or the acid down so I'm gonna go an inch and a quarter in and then I'm gonna go um, an inch apart after that So now I have six spots to put either acid or sample, and I'm going to label these. And I like to put my, my acids all together and then my wine samples all together. And just my personal preference, I always start with malic, and then tartaric, and then the lactic. You could put these in any 
any way you want, but I, I typically keep the malic and the lactic separated by the tartaric. It's just my way of doing it. And then I'll label what my samples are going to be. And today I'm going to be running tests on my cab, my Merlot, and Barbera. So, pretty simple. And um, I like to start by putting my acids on the paper before I actually get my wine samples. That way I can get those on and dried and uh, and I'm not trying to juggle too many samples at the same time. So anyway, so we're going to take one of our little pipettes and these are one-time uses. You're going to throw these away. They come a hundred in here. You know, you can order any of this stuff, you know, onesie twosie. Uh, you don't have to just, you don't have to rebuy the entire kit. There's a little blue mark on this pipette. I'm not sure if you can see that. I typically like to put that mark on the bottom. I think it's actually supposed to be on top. I don't think it matters, but I keep it on the bottom because that gives me something visual to look at once my samples are up in there. And it's very hard to see it the samples up in here and that blue line just helps me to be able to actually see it and you're going to just dip it into your sample and it's just going to actually draw I don't know if you can see that it's going to draw up about half inch to three quarters of an inch automatically and then what we're going to do is we're going to take I, you put your finger over the end of it because we don't want it to the paper will tend to draw the acid out uh, fairly quickly if you don't put your finger over it and we're going to want to just dot it I mean just right on our little mark a simple little dot I don't know if you can see that but it's about the size of a match head and that's pretty much what we're going to do and we're going to do that with all three acid and we're going to do that a total of four to five times just continuing to go over the dot that we've placed. Once it dries, again, finger over the end, and you're just going to small dot. And we're just going to do that, you know, like I said, four or five times. So we have a nice amount of that acid um, in into the paper for running our tests. And so now we've drawn our samples from our wine, and we're going to start to um, apply those to the uh, paper just like we did our acid standards and so this first dot here is a uh, is the cab and we're just going to do the same thing we're just going to dot it and we're going to do that about four or five times also and um, we're going to let the whole thing dry for about 30 minutes after we've uh, applied a dot of each wine. This is my Merlot sample. Um, and again, it's just going back over that same little spot four to five times uh, just to make sure that we have a nice amount of our sample um, embedded in the paper to run our test. We want to make sure that each time we dot it, we let it dry before we dot it again otherwise it, the, our sample will get kind of large and what we don't want is we don't want the two to run together we want to keep them separated and so this last one is our Barbera and I should also mention I typically like to uh, put the date up in the top uh, corner right here also because typically I'll end up running two or three of these tests from the beginning of uh, uh, inoculating melalactic to the time it's finally finished and I want to keep that for my record and see how it's progressed. Um, I have here the last one that was run and this was run on November 9th 